Live. What's up, people? I already got people in here. What's up, Groovy? Groovy. Groovy Savage. He's a savage. It is a wonderful Wednesday. I am in, uh, taking a, this is like a little middle breaking point in the middle of the day in terms of meeting galore. Uh, my Wednesdays are meeting packed, and I've had two wedding consultations today so far, meeting about a website and another meeting related to the company. So far, I've been four meetings in. I got two more to go. Uh, I got a meeting coming up today to talk about logistics for Midwest DJs Live Conference. Uh, that's coming up at the end of the month. It's in two weeks. And we're going to be doing a lot of stuff there for both lighting. We're doing the lighting for the whole entire event. We're doing the main stage. We're doing the nightlife. We got a booth. We're going to be selling lights. It's going to be crazy. So I got a meeting coming up today to talk uh, more details on logistics for the main stage to make sure we got all of our T's and I's and dots and crosses and all that. Anyways, what questions do you guys have in the chat below? Um, would love to get some questions and answers in these sessions if you guys are new to this. Uh, basically, I do a little pre-show before I premiere the video every Wednesday and sometimes on Sundays as well. And this is the pre-show where basically I'm going to answer any questions, comments, concerns, burning desires you guys want me to answer. Um, so yeah, this is, if you're in here now and you know about it, this is basically where I answer questions, comments, and concerns that you guys might have. Uh, we won't have a DJ set up at the booth. <laughs> Dave, no, we don't. We won't have people to supply the booth. We're gonna be so busy. There's gonna be maybe one of us at the booth the whole entire time. Um, Dave Gordon down there in the comments is uh, one of our sales reps for Both Lighting USA, helping make lighting simple for all you guys. But the the, the team of us that's gonna be there, it's gonna only be. It's literally four of us that are gonna be grinding our butt off to pull all this off. It's gonna be me. It's gonna be Jordan. It's gonna be Marcel. It's gonna be David, and uh, we gotta manage to have a show. A show booth where people can come talk and learn and sell and buy lights, but we also gotta we also gotta run the main stage lighting. We also gotta be set up and running all the night lighting, and we gotta set up and tear down all of that. So it's gonna be um, it's gonna be late. I'm, I'm predicting some late nights and some early mornings and little to no sleep and lots of caffeine. That's my prediction, and uh, I'm gonna try and film all of it. But anyways, any, any questions? Anybody got any questions? I uh, when you, when you guys jump in here, I, I like I'm waiting for a question. Otherwise, I'm rambling here to try and uh, talk about or say anything. But uh, today's video that I'm premiering is a um, little day in the life vlog going behind the scenes of Fusion Sound Lighting. In particular, we're going to be going behind the scenes, showing you guys what two days of my life looks like running the company, and uh, we're doing a ribbon cutting and part of it, and we're doing a grand opening party at the office. So we're going to. In the video, you'll see we transformed the warehouse into a party space and put some tubes and cool stuff. But I want to buy top speakers. You want to buy top speakers. There's a lot of options. Let me tell you, there's a lot of options. I'd probably buy some 12-inch speakers and some subs, if not some column arrays. Loving me, the column arrays nowadays. I had my first wedding May 4th. Any tips? Uh, you need some Star Wars tracks ready to go because may the fork be with you. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, any tips? Uh, scour the internet. Look for all the different watch videos. Watch hella videos on how people do introductions and uh, have a script. Uh, if you're not good at emceeing, write yourself a script and read off the script for your first weddings and eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need a script at all. Um, Secondly, practice your mixing as much as you can and really drive home to the couple asking about what music they want to hear and what music they do not want to hear. Um, I spend a lot of time in my playing process talking about music to play and music to not play. And then that gives you all the ammo that you need to basically guarantee your success. But um, those are the most challenging things at a wedding is your emceeing. So make sure you have scripts. And from a music standpoint, just make sure you drive home with the couple what the music is that you want for the evening. Have you noticed that wedding couples seem to want lower prices lately? <laughs> they always want lower prices. Uh, we, we, we just upped our prices. We just upped everyone by another $200. We raised our prices, and uh, we're still booking. So the name of the, name of the game is uh, until someone's telling you no, you're not uh 
but you're going to have no's like me and uh me and people talk about what's the ratio of no to yes to guarantee that you're getting the most amount of leads and the most traffic but you are going to get a lot of no's we get more no's than we do yeses and we get more you're too expensive than anything else and it's hilarious i talked about in the podcast yesterday we're literally getting couples now that say now nah, we booked another dj because it was cheaper but we'd love to hire you for the lighting which blows my mind because like we charge two thousand for just the DJ, no lighting, and, and they'll go find a DJ for a thousand bucks, and then turn around and spend a thousand dollars on us for the lighting because they know our lighting is better, but they won't spend the extra money to make sure their DJ is good. Blows my mind. Um, but yeah, no, we booked the, the top end clients. That's kind of our name of the game. I don't, I really don't care. We're not even competing. I always tell our, uh, I tell my salespeople. Uh, we are not competing with other DJ companies. We're not competing for price. If anything, we're competing with the um, we're competing with uh, bands for these gigs. A lot of times, we're in that price bracket. We're in the three to four to five thousand dollar price bracket here, and we're pretty much competing with bands. And we're not really we're not competing with DJ companies, which is nice. Um, between which one is better for outdoor events? Fifteen. If you're not you. 12 inch speakers are the best overall around mid high sounding speaker, but you have to use subwoofers with them. If you want speakers that don't require subwoofers, get yourself 15 inch tops and they will do a good job of basically having more low that the subs would normally replace. So that's kind of how it works. If you're not using subs, 15 inch tops. If you are using subs, 12 inch tops. So it's kind of like the a hit or miss thing there. Here to show love, question from engineering to full-time business owner, what made you take action? Um, I actually went through a little spurt there. I quit engineering. So I was working, I worked for three and a half years out of college at an engineer manufacturing quality engineering position. And after COVID, like it was just Re relentless like 60 plus hour weeks I, I said I need to find a new engineering company that gives me more freedom I don't care if I get paid less so I literally took a 10 grand pay, ca pay cut and went and worked for another DJ or another uh, engineering job for six months it only took me six months but because I was working so much in that engineering job I, I was like kind of blindsided to the potential of the DJ of the DJ company that I, I was already building and then when I moved to another engineering job where I had more freedom, like um, I was actually able to work only eight hours a week, eight hours a day, eight, 10 hours a day max. I got to take a lunch break. I could leave, go on lunch break, pop up, open my laptop and, you know, answer emails and do more work when it comes to leads and stuff. And just that alone, that extra freedom, that extra time to put more energy into my business doubled my business. Like my business took off even faster because I was able to spend more time. And I was like, what the hell am I doing wasting time on this engineering job that I don't plan to do for the rest of my life when I'm literally making the same amount of money I do engineering wise as I do as a DJ. So I just made the switch. I also had a really good savings net too. Um, like I had about a year's salary saved up in savings. Um, we had already purchased our house. And, uh, you know, we already put the down payment on the house and we we're paying that. And I was like, I'm going to make the switch. So I, I pulled the plug and my business took off and grew even faster because it's just like if you're able to have more time to spend into it, how quickly can you grow that? And I've already got back to my same income level, which is amazing. Uh, what's your main controller you're rocking nowadays? Is it still the Rain TT's separate mixer? Uh, yeah, so my main setup is, it's actually, I just upgraded everything in it, but it's all the same stuff. So it's the Rain 12 Mark IIs, and I upgraded the Pioneer S9 to the Pioneer DJM S7, um, because now I have separate buttons to put hot cues on one side and stems on the other. On the S9, it's just like a center selector, and you have to do hot, codes, hot cues on both or whatnot, but yeah. Um... Sandy ground, know your worth, that's for sure. I've just got some new speakers. Blowing my mind to DJ the heartbeat of the event. Absolutely. The brand is Vogue Speakers. Cool. Caught your video on column competition. Column competition. I know you're digging those. Is there better now than sub top combo? Um, 
R- Richard, uh, for sure, Colin Murray's. I I just I'm I'm on board with the look. Um, from a cost perspective, it's just I've evolved. We've evolved. We're we're in high end luxury weddings and high end corporate events now, and the look actually matters. So it's worth the extra few grand it cost me to get a column array versus a speaker and sub combo. Speaker and sub top and sub combo still sounds just as good as the column arrays. It doesn't sound any better um, to do column arrays. If anything, we're actually sacrificing a little bit of the control of the sound because it's a wider coverage and you get more throw out of a top than you do out of a column array. The column arrays are okay. They can do it. They can pull off events, but you get a little bit more throw out of a true top, but it, it's a budget thing though, because it's a few extra grand to buy the column array that can do what a sub and top can do. Subs and tops are just by far the cheapest, best way to get quick, loud, best sound. If you want a column array to do what those can do, you got to spend a good chunk of change. Um, and if the look matters like it does for us now, that's why I've switched them all over to it is because the look actually matters. Uh, should, what budget should you have to buy subwoofers? Two grand. Uh, one grand per subwoofer. Um, my best bang for your buck subwoofer right now is the LD Systems ICOA 18s. I own two of them right now. I'm planning to buy two more. Um, best bang for your buck subwoofer on the market by far. I do not still use Virtual DJ. I'm pretty much all Serato now. They don't realize business expenses, subscription, website, credit card expenses. Oh my God, yes. Dude, the back end cost of running a DJ company is insane. Like, I, I literally need more DJs to be able to support the back end expense. Uh, why do you need a distributor? Why can't I order certain lights from Europe? I'm not entirely sure your situation, but a lot of times manufacturers don't sell direct to people. They have to have a dealer in place. It's just how business works. It's sad. Have you ever looked into shed lighting? Now, dude, I I own both Lighting USA. I'm not going to support shed because they're buying the exact same lighting that I do. It's They're a competitive company to me, basically. They're a competitor. So they've reached out to me, wanted me to do sponsorships, but I own both lighting, so it makes no sense for me to entertain them. So are you guys pretty much only doing weddings at this point? No. <laughs> We are doing way more than that right now. We've um, we're set to double our business this year in corporate AV space, doing speakers, microphones, projectors, screens, all that sort of stuff. Um, literally, right now today, we're doing an event out at High Point University, playing background music. Um, and like last week, we did eight events, and only three, four, four of those were weddings. Four of those were weddings. Four of those were corporate audio events, and we're still doing proms. So we're still doing a lot of stuff during the weekdays. Um, but yes, we do do discounts for off days. So uh, we basically, we discount anything that's not a Saturday um, when it comes to discounting. We discount anything that's not a Saturday and we also discount Saturdays that are not on peak months. So for us here, peak months are April, May, June, September, October, November. Those six months out of the year are peak high demands. Someone is going to book us those Saturdays. The other ones we throw, we like discount $200 if they want to book us. Um, just because it, it helps us be a little bit more competitive. Considering school policies against soliciting, what is the best approach to marketing them? Considering their budgets, would would you say even practically free foot, get a foot in the door? I mean, yeah. I mean, school dances still, you can do free stuff, like, like free events for them if you want. If you got the time and the bandwidth to do it. Um, we, we literally call them. I mean, they say no soliciting. I don't give a crap. We, we literally call them and we're like, Hey, just wanted to see who's in charge of the prom committee this year. We wanted to see if we could DJ it again, again, because nine times out of 10, they will let us talk to that prom advisor. If we say we want to DJ it again, did we actually DJ it before? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But then they will get us in contact with who's the prom advisor, and then we can show them our pricing and talk about what we have to offer. And if it works, it works. If not, it not. We've come a long way, LOL. Call them arrays only. <laughs> Seriously, call them arrays have come a long way. Where are we on time-wise? We got this new video coming out at 2 p.m. 
Um, did you keep the JBL system as a backup in case something happens? No, because I already have too many backup systems as it is. Um, the JBL system is, uh, I've sold it to my other DJs. I still have the SRX tops. I'm trying to get rid of those. The VRX subs, one of my DJs that works for me, bought them off me. Um, but like literally we, in our, in, in our warehouse right now, we have 44 G2s. We have 28 G3s, the LD system G3s. We have 18 inch LD system subs. We have the RCF tops and we have a variety of battery powered speakers. We don't, we don't need battery. You don't need backup speakers, in my opinion. Uh, with with new powered speakers, your backup speaker system is the other speaker. Like if one speaker fries, you can still get through the event with one spe with the other speakers. So that's the backup, and you can always go to Guitar Center and buy new speakers if something were to happen. They're gonna have something for you to make it happen. Also, you got um, you got buddies in the dj industry i highly recommend making friends in your local area with all the different djs and knowing what all gear they have i've done a good job of that as we've grown to be like hey yo what what gear you got that i could potentially rent off of you and i have basically i have a back-end list of knowing who's got what in my area if i were to need it um so yeah Starting to think the bigger wedding shows are more bang for the buck when initially I thought smaller niche ones were better. That's interesting, Kevin. I've actually done the opposite. I've gone away from the big ones um, only because they're doing a terrible job of bringing clientele worth a shit. Now, there are some big ones that we are still doing um, because they, they're able to market and bring me a lot of good uh, clients. Um, but actually, I've shifted a lot of our focus when it comes to wedding shows that the goal is to not get leads. The goal is to network with all the vendors that are there. Um, and that approach has been paying dividends. Um, we've literally sp stopped spending a lot of our money and time into, um, you know, trying to get referrals off of our clients. And this is specifically weddings. Um, and we focused on and trying to get leads at these like wedding shows. We're going to, we're spending a lot more money on networking events now. I'm sending uh, Hannah, who's basically who runs Fusion for me. I, I literally gave her a budget and I said, I want you to go as, to as much networking events as you can do this year. So she's going to networking vendor dinners. She's going to Chamber of Commerce events. She's just networking her ass off to just be the face of the company in front of all these vendors. So that way, um, as a DJ company, we're not going to be the first one booked. So that way, she's in front of all those people and can basically get referrals better. What's the best speaker you recommend right now? Um, all around LD Systems Maui 44 G2s are the best column raised speaker on the market. I don't care what you say. It's the best one on the market. And it's just it works for 90% of the events you will do, if not 99% of all the events you'll do. They're just a great all around speaker. And that's right. Did you say earlier on you're doing AB? How you get into that type of work? Uh, Kevin, that is even more networking. Um, the AV world is you got to know somebody. So that is the definition of the AV world. So the bigger AV companies that are in your area become buddy, buddy with them because nine times out of 10, they only want to take on the big jobs. And I'm talking like the hundred thousand dollar AV giant conferences that you guys get ads for and stuff. That's the ones they want. They don't want the simple um meeting for 50 people where they need one wireless microphone and a speaker and a projector and a screen they want the big boy events uh, and that's kind of how we've worked our way into that space is networking through community events chamber events getting to know the businesses the vendors because they have sales meetings they have staff meetings um and just learning all the associations the nonprofits, and networking on that front the colleges in your area all of them they need av production uh, and then getting to know the AV companies in your area, the ones that are actually out doing these events. And uh, the reason why our company is going to double this year is because we created a great relationship with one of the production companies here in town. And the owner gave me a call and basically said, hey, I'm trying to stop do doing these smaller events. I don't want to do them anymore. And we want to restructure the business to do only big, big corporate um, and concert style events. So... He was like, can I send all that business your way? No, no ties, no nothing. Just I'm going to send all the leads your way. And that is why we were doubling because they literally met with all the venues, the hotels that they service, 
and said, hey, contact Fusion. And we are quoting and learning and growing incredibly fast in that space. And it's it's one of the areas I'm spending a lot of time right now trying to figure out how to do everything. And it's it's a lot of learning on the job and a lot of money. The corporate AV stuff is just a lot of money to get into. It was a huge investment. It was about it was grouped. Is the 18 good brand band DJs yet? Yeah. Uh, the LD the LD Icoa 18s are a great subwoofer. Probably my favorite subwoofer on the market for the bang for the buck. Um, do you sell Buffalo and USA products to the UK? Um, it would cost you more to buy it from us here in the United States. Uh, we can get you a quote. We'll just basically have it shipped from the factory to you because that's cheaper than us shipping it from the US to the UK. It's cheaper to ship it from China to the UK. Although you have an outstanding social media presence, what would you say is the uh, social media ads trade shows? Um, Paul, I, so uh, let me see what other questions because I got a whole topic on marketing that I can talk about. When, when does the both lighting and transmitter, the bulky 201, become necessary? Can you run 16 uplights on South Storage and built-in normal signature? Um, Joey, I would recommend getting the DMX Pro if you're doing uplighting. The the closer one, uh, it can work for uplighting. I've been using it for years, but the Pro one just guarantees zero dropouts all around the room when it comes to doing uplighting, so I'd recommend that. Um, is it worth paying $400 a month for wedding wire in the right to get more gigs? I'll talk about that in a second in this marketing discussion. AV is the bread and butter for, yes, absolutely. Um, and AV events are reoccurring events. That's the biggest hack right there. Weddings, it's a one-off client. You do all that work to get that lead and to book that wedding, and they're never going to book you again. An AV client, you spend that time and that money to build a relationship with a nonprofit or a college, and they're going to be sending events for you every single year. And you never have to spend another dime on marketing to continue to do that event. That's the beauty of corporate AB. You get them once, you do a good job, you keep them for a lifetime. That's the beauty of AB. I love AB. Um, uh, advice for the, for the hopeless. For the hopeless? What are you talking about? Yeah, love seeing your in-game ads in game ads that's awesome um what was the first speaker you had uh well if you're not counting my home speakers i had a harbinger 15 inch top worst decision ever made because i blew both of them within a year and then i bought jbl speakers and those lasted me years on end so um anyways on this marketing topic of like you know uh, what's the best marketing techniques right now there's this concept i i i want to I'm going to be doing this in a lot of my business coaching. I'm going to be launching here in June, July, but we got six minutes. So I'm going, to, whoa, whoops. I locked my phone. I locked my phone. I'm back. Um, there's this concept that I want everyone to learn and talk about and learn more about. It's called omnipresence. 